Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're in section 6.3 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. Um, here we get to introduce the auxiliary field H, which is ana an analogous to the D field um, in electrostatics and, and matter. So now that we know that the bound current is just the curl of whatever magnetization is inside the material, and the surface current bound is the uh, magnetization across the normal hat uh, at the surface. Um, we can um, think about what happens in problems where we have currents that are flowing in addition to these and what happens to the net result of, of uh, the magnetic field. So the magnetization of the matter plus um, the magnetic field due to whatever currents we have flowing around. Now if, if, the, if the material we're talking about isn't a conductor, um, we can imagine that we put tiny wires inside the material to allow the charge to flow according to how we want it to. Um, otherwise, if it is a conductor, you can just flow through the material itself. Um, in any event, the total current is equal to the bound current plus the free current. The free current is the stuff that we tend to have control over. Um, so, just like the free charge was the charge that we got to place, uh, you know, for instance, on the capacitor plates. Uh, the bound charge was the charge that the die the, the material inside the dielectric would uh, produce to oppose that electric field. Okay, um, this is not any new physics. This is just a convenience, um, and the end result is that when we write Ampere's law with this new J vector, so we have one over mu naught of uh, the curl of B is equal to J vector, well that's just JB plus JF, the free and the bound currents, and um, so we basically get um, the free current plus what's the bound current? Well that's the curl of the magnetization. Okay, And so if we collect these two to the same side we get 1 over mu naught um, well, hold on a second. The curl of 1 over mu naught of the B field minus the magnetization will give you the free current, or rather the free current will give you this value right here. And this value is the auxiliary magnetic field called H. Um, and we can define that as just mu naught, 1 over mu naught B vector minus M vector. Okay, that's H. Memorize it. Um, don't forget it. So the Ampere's law for H simply states that the curl of the auxiliary field H is equal to the free current that was introduced into the system, ignoring the bound current caused by the magnetization of the material. And um, you can rewrite this in integral form. So the closed loop integral around some loop of h dot dl is going to give you the total free and closed current inside that loop. Okay, so we have a loop, an Ampereian loop, and we put um, the, we count up the charge passing through that loop and that gives you the h field dotted along that loop. So um, now we can use Ampere's law with real matter just like with the D vector gave us a, an opportunity to use Gauss's law with real matter. And um, the, well, we'll see as we go through examples that the H, the auxiliary field H does not give you everything you want, um, but it gives you everything you generally need. So let's do some examples. Thanks for your time. Bye.